All right, folks, this is Scott with the Game Audio Institute, and we are back with things that are very unusual. Yes, because I have a particular project of my very own that I had done many, many years ago that I am planning on doing a new version of this project, you know, a more fully fleshed out version of this project. And uh, I originally wrote this project in Unity and C Sharp, and I also used C Sound in a Unity integration, basically, in order to be able to get the sounds that I wanted. So it's actually a generative um, music project that's actually a 3D sequencer. And so I'm then going to basically rebuild this whole project in Unreal, an engine that I have had very little experience dealing with, a little bit in 4. Uh, I've opened up 5, and this is 5.1, which I've hardly ever done any work with at all, and especially with Metasounds, which is their new cool, awesome uh, audio engine that can do things like procedural music and stuff like that, uh, and procedural audio. And we're going to try and see if it works as this kind of new platform for my sequencer. And uh, that will be an interesting adventure, which you can come along and watch if you wish to do so. You know, that's going to be an interesting thing. However, I thought I would, you know, basically at least explain about what the concept was. And then you can, you know... Uh, Take it or leave it. If you want to come and join me for the thing, you can. Uh, so let's go take a look over here and see what we have going on in terms of the concept. So essentially, you know, um, the basic idea that I had was based originally on this sort of sequencer, essentially, the typical kinds of sequencers that you normally see, these grid-based sequencers, right? In this case, this is a 16 by 16 grid sequencer, right? It's very simple. Uh, basically, time runs usually left to right, and pitches are sort of, you know, up, up, down to up, you know, with lower ones and higher ones, and if you have drums, then it's just sort of like low drum sounds and high drum sounds, and stuff like that. So that's the idea. We're basically here. But I thought about this idea of making it so that I could get transformations on melodies, and I thought of this really kind of unusual idea of essentially taking essentially the same amount that you have steps and making layers. So in other words, imagine 16 of these 16 by 16 sequencers, okay? And then you stick them one on top of the other and you put it in front of your face. So the closest one is here and then it goes all the way back all the way out here to number 16. So number 16 is the furthest away from you. That's the idea. So what happens is you could get transformations that are kind of unusual or different. Now, I'm going to just show you a little bit about, you know, kind of one idea and using this sort of 8x8 eight eight grid, which is actually what I did do when I was in Unity. And I'll show you how that turned out inside, inside a, in just a little bit here. So basically what happens is we have our initial simple melody like this. And if we take this and rotate this on the Z axis, in other words, we're just rotating it like this, essentially. That's at least how Unity looks at it. You can take a melody like this, and if you rotate it just 90 degrees to the left, then what happens is you suddenly get a chord where you only had single notes here before. So you get lots of different notes, but you only get them playing one time. And then if you go over here, you get the same note, but it's a different note if you rotate it 180 degrees. So this is just the tiniest taste of, you know, kind of what you can do just even on one layer in terms of just rotating it that way. Now imagine if you could take the entire cube and rotate that and get different kinds of transformations for your melodies. That's, that's the idea. That's the basic point of this whole thing. And this uh, image right here is just an example of uh, somebody that made some cool little thing here. Uh, but, I, but it's kind of similar to this sort of concept. Um, the project is called, is called Constellation, and it's called that because of the fact that when you see constellations, you think of them as sort of flat things, but in reality, those stars are all different different, different distances away from each other. So the idea is that if you were to somehow be able to rotate that constellation, it would look completely different because of the rotation of those objects. So that's kind of the concept that I basically had come up with. So for that, I essentially created myself uh, a cube. Um, so the idea is that you know, when you start this out, and uh, I'll play this out, and then I'll, I'll describe a little bit about what's going on overall. Um, so basically, if we play this out, um, I ought to randomly just generate notes. It's just much easier at this point than having to, you know, put them in by hand and stuff like that. Uh, and I didn't have a good interface set up for that kind of thing. Or, And what happens is that if you play this, it's playing this, you know, sounds. 
And the idea ends up being is that you're, you're seeing all eight layers with the first layer that's closest to you and then all the way back. Now, some of those notes aren't turned on because I just sort of randomized uh, the idea of the turning some of the notes on and turning them off, essentially. But the idea is that time is still moving left to right, technically, and pitches are still lower to higher, basically. So there's an absolute that's always happening. But more importantly, like different timbres are basically there for those different layers. So if you rotated a melody that was there and you say you rotated a melody that was in the a layer that was closest to you and you decided to rotate it 180 degrees, let's say on the Y axis, which is just turning it around essentially, right? That's the idea. Um, then what happens is it moves away from you. So you can see what happens here. Pardon the, uh, yeah. So anyway, the deal is, as you can see, it's moving away from you, which means that those objects that were closer to you now are 90 degrees away. Basically, I, I rotate by 90 degrees each time for this for this button press. Um, so that means that the pattern, patterns change a little bit, you know? And you can also do things like solo your individual tracks, which is kind of cool, you know? And in addition to all of that sort of stuff, Right, so that's the idea there, basically. And um, and the coloring is sort of based on the star temperatures. It's kind of complex to go into. I don't really want to, you know, I won't, I won't talk too much about it, basically, overall. So what happens now is now we basically can go into a individual. Let me show you like that. Yeah. So there's actually the ability to edit the individual layers. And this is where some of the cool ideas that drive the project kind of come from. You can set the instrument, you can set a sequence length. So I had decided to make the sequence length work so that, you know, you could make it longer than eight if you wanted to. You could also make it shorter than eight, but I didn't really want to have just a sequence length from one to eight. That feel, felt boring, potentially. So the idea is you could make it longer than eight. The only problem ends up being is you can't make it longer than eight with notes. So there wouldn't be notes, but there could be a rest. So therefore it would wait a certain amount of time, a number of beats or whatever, or rhythmic units and then it would start again. So you could get these kinds of cool phasing effects that would be kind of nice to check out, you know, and things like that. There's a division here and it can do all kinds of divisions of notes, you know, of triplets and, quart and you know, 16th notes and all that other kind of stuff. You can transpose the parts and that's very simple. Uh, and then this is just a indication of the layer one. Again, this is not the best design. I would totally redesign it in a new way for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm planning on lots of different kinds of things. But uh, just to mention that this was actually all handled, oh, the audio was handled by C-Sound. So this is a generative sequencer. It's a generative musical sequencer. It's not procedural. So, cause it's not randomized all the time. Uh, and the idea is that it's, you know, all of the sounds were handled by C sound in Unity because the timing uh, specifically in Unity to trigger individual notes on a grid was just atrocious. It was never, never consistent. Um, and Unreal was kind of like that before they redesigned the engine and especially before they got meta sounds, which is why I am interested in trying to see if this is going to work. So with all that being said, uh, if you want to join me for this journey while I explore things, it's going to be an interesting combination of newbie stuff dealing with, you know, you, uh, Unreal for the first time and dealing with the frustrations of that. Uh, and also then advanced concepts of different kinds and trying to see if I can make certain things happen. Uh, I always end up being the edge case, the one who's like doing unusual things with the stuff that nobody else has been doing. So that just ends up being what I'm, what I do. So that's basically what you can see here. And if you're interested in joining me for this little journey, you can come and subscribe and get notifications and find out, you know, when the next one's going to drop. This is going to be a long one, though. It's going to be probably taking, you know, months, if not close to a year before I have anything ready for this whole thing. And I'm definitely going to at least mock it up a little bit on um, heads, uh, VR headsets. I have a Quest, so I'll probably put it on the Quest and try and figure out how it's going to work. And this is going to be full of a lot of frustrating moments of me, like not figuring things out and then barely figuring things out and then having to redesign things and stuff like that. So it's going to be a long process, but I hope you'll be interested in joining me for some of it, perhaps. Uh, if you're interested in more advanced kinds of musical concepts, uh, that might be right up your alley. Who knows? So anyway, uh, stay tuned for much cool more things for the uh, Game Audio Institute. We have a lot of really awesome uh, things coming up uh, with uh, Tetris Effect, and we have uh, another game that we're planning on analyzing the music for as well. And of course, we'll have probably more some scripting shorts. And who knows, we'll probably have a speed run coming at, uh, at some point in the future as well. So stay tuned to all of our stuff. And I hope this helps you get your game audio on and we'll see you again in the next one. Bye.